What's up everybody, welcome to another video and I hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles because in this video we're gonna talk about proof by contrapositive, which is another method we can use to prove conditional statements along with the direct proof method that we hopefully already have down by now. But if you don't, it's okay, I have a video on it and I'll link it right above. You can go ahead and click that video, go get caught up and then come back to this video. I'll also link a few other videos that I have on topics that are pretty necessary to understand in order for this video to make sense. So I'll link those above as well. Proof by contrapositive. What is the contrapositive? Why is it useful? We're gonna talk about it right now. So the contrapositive of the conditional statement, P implies Q is the conditional statement. The negation of Q implies the negation of P, okay? So if I have a conditional statement, I can write the contrapositive as the negation of the conclusion of that original conditional statement implies the negation of the premise, okay? This is really useful, and the reason why is because a conditional statement and the contrapositive of that conditional statement are what we call logically equivalent, okay? And that means that they're either both true or they're both false. So if I have a conditional statement and I know that the contrapositive of that conditional statement is true, then I can conclude that that conditional statement is true as well. And that's the basic idea of proof by contrapositive, is we take a conditional statement that we're trying to prove, maybe we're trying to use the direct proof method and it's not working out very well, well, what we can do is we can look at the contrapositive of that conditional statement and see if we can prove that directly. And if we can show that this is true, the contrapositive, then we can therefore say that, well, that original conditional statement must be true as well because we know that they're logically equivalent. So that's the basic idea, and we're gonna see in a couple of examples I'm about to do right now that a lot of times it is a lot easier to prove that the contrapositive of a conditional statement is true rather than just proving the conditional statement is true directly. That's why this proof by contrapositive method is so useful. But lastly, for this part of the video, uh, I just wanted to show the, the truth table just in case you're not convinced that these are logically equivalent. You can clearly see why. Whenever one is true, the other is true. Whenever one is false, the other is false. We would say they have the same truth table, therefore they're logically equivalent or they imply each other, right? There's a biconditional between them, however you wanna think of it. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get into a couple of examples. So here's our first example. Let x be any integer. If 5x minus 7 is even, then x is odd. So this is the conditional statement we're going to prove. And obviously this video is titled Proof by Contrapositive, so that's what we're going to use. But you're probably going to be given this on a quiz or an exam or something, and you're not going to be told which proof method to use. And this seems to be the trickiest part of learning all this stuff is deciding which proof method to use when you're just given something like this. And really figuring that out just comes with practice and experience. For me personally, looking at this, I would probably first try proof by contrapositive. It's gonna end up being a lot easier than direct proof. And what jumps out to me to, to tell me that is the fact that this conclusion statement, we're dealing with X versus the premise, we're dealing with 5X minus seven. X is a lot easier to deal with. Right? So in general, whenever you see a simpler statement that is in the conclusion, it may be a good idea to try the contrapositive, but you can always just try direct proof and just see what happens. And that's the thing about these kind of a proofs is if you try something and it's not working, you can try something else. And a lot of times, especially when you get up to higher level maths and harder proofs, that's really what it comes down to is just trying things until you find something that works. So just for the sake of this video, let's try direct proof and let's see if we come across a roadblock and then maybe we'll switch to proof by contrapositive and we'll see, oh yeah, this is a lot easier than trying to do a direct proof. So if we're doing a direct proof, we're gonna do what? We're gonna assume that the premise is true. So we're gonna assume that 5x minus seven is even. And the definition of 5x minus seven being even is that then 5x minus seven equals 2k, where k is some integer, right? Whoops, some integer, that got a little ugly there, sorry about that. Okay, then 5x minus seven equals 2k, where k is some integer. So we need to show that x is odd. So we need x equals 2k plus one, or two times some integer plus one. That's really what we wanna, we wanna end up with. So let's solve for x and see what happens. I'm gonna do some quick maths here. Add seven, divide by five, so I get then, x equals 2k plus 7 over 5. And now what's, you know, you see the roadblock now, right? Because it's a little tricky. I don't know if this is odd. And honestly, I don't even really know if this is an integer or not, right? It's hard to even tell at this point, And I'm kind of stuck. I've kind of hit a roadblock. So at this point, what I would probably do is erase everything and go back and try to prove this using the contrapositive, 
okay? And see if that works, and we're gonna see that it's gonna be a lot simpler. So let's write out the contrapositive of this conditional statement. So for the contrapositive, we're gonna take this conclusion and we're gonna negate it. So that's what we're gonna start with. So what is the negation of x is odd? Well, that's just that x is even. So if x is even, and now we're gonna take the premise and negate that. If x is even, then 5x minus 7 is odd. And now we'll look what we're able to assume. Then 5x minus 7 is odd. Now what we're able to assume is that x is even. So x equals 2k, where k is some integer, which is a lot easier to deal with than 5x minus 7 was when we tried the direct proof. So hopefully now you're seeing why this makes our lives a lot easier. So if x is even, uh, let's see, actually I'm going to start with my assumption. So if x is even, all I did here was I wrote out the contrapositive of the original statement. So I'm going to assume. So let's see, uh, suppose x is even, right? So from here on out, it's really just a direct proof, but I'm using the contrapositive of the original statement and doing a direct proof on that. So if you know how to do use the direct proof method, then you should be good from here. All that you really need to practice is being able to write out the contrapositive and being able to identify, okay, when do I use the contrapositive versus when do I do a direct proof, right? So from here, it's just a direct proof on this contrapositive statement. So suppose x is even, then x equals 2k, where k is some integer, then what does 5x minus 7 equal? Then 5x minus 7 uh, equals, let's see, 5 times 2k minus 7. So I'm just substituting x uh, with 2k. So 5 times 2k minus 7 which equals what? I guess I could distribute this. I'm really trying to get 5x minus 7 equals 2k plus 1, or 2 times some integer plus 1, right? Because I'm trying to show that 5x minus 7 is odd. So let's see. I can write this out. That equals 10k minus 7. And I'm trying to get 2 times some integer. Let's see. So I think I'm going to actually be left with 5k. And I'm trying to get plus 1. So can I make this work? Let's see, minus seven, so plus one, so minus eight needs to be in here. So minus four, is that gonna work? Let's make sure it's equivalent. 10K minus eight plus one, that gives us the minus seven. Yeah, I think this works. Since this is an integer, int, right, that's an integer. We have shown that five X minus seven equals two times an integer plus one, which is the definition of an odd integer. Therefore, five X minus seven is odd. Uh, then, 5x minus 7 is odd, proof completed. So we have proven that the contrapositive of the original statement is true. Therefore, we can say that that original conditional statement is true. So let's try one more example, but hopefully that makes sense. So here's our second and last example. Let x be any integer. If x squared is even, then x is even. So this is the conditional statement we are trying to prove. And at this point in the video, I encourage you to pause the video, pull out a pencil and paper, and try to prove this on your own. Then press play to compare your proof with my proof. But I'm gonna go ahead and continue. Obviously, we're gonna use proof by contrapositive because that's the title of the video. But you can try with that same pencil and paper to prove this directly. And you're gonna see what the problem is and really the problem is with this x squared. It creates some problems for us when trying to prove this directly. And since the x is a lot easier to deal with than the x squared, and the x is also in this conclusion statement, it should be a big hint for us that says, hey, we can use the contrapositive of this statement to prove the statement, okay? Hopefully that's making sense by now, but I'm gonna go ahead and take the contrapositive and go from there. So I'm gonna negate this conclusion. So the negation of x is even is x is odd, pretty straightforward. So if x is odd, and again, I'm just writing out the contrapositive of the original conditional statement. If x is odd, then what? Then x squared is odd. And now this should be a pretty straightforward direct proof. A lot easier than trying to prove the original statement directly, which is the whole point of proof by contrapositive is to make our lives easier, okay? So if x is odd, then x squared is odd. So now we're gonna just go along with the proof. Assume x is odd. What does it mean for an integer to be odd? Well, that means then x equals 2k plus 1, where k is some integer. 
okay? So what are we trying to show? X squared is odd. So what does X squared equal? Then X squared equals 2K plus 1 squared, which equals what? I can fold this out. I get 2K squared. That becomes, let's see, 4K squared. And then I get, let's see, plus 2K plus 2K. So that's plus 4K. And again, maybe you need to go step by step. I'm sort of skipping some steps here, uh, plus one. And what I can do with this is I can factor out a two from both of these first two terms, and that's gonna give me the two times an integer plus one that I'm looking for to complete the proof. So if I factor out a two, I get two. And in the parentheses, what do I have left? Two K squared plus two K plus one. This is definitely an integer, right? k is an integer, so an integer squared is still an integer, times 2 is still an integer, so um, right, it's still an integer, you can verify that on your own if you want. Since this is an integer, we have x squared is odd, then x squared, uh, yeah, then x squared is odd. Proof complete. So hopefully that's pretty similar to the proof you did on your own, and hopefully this makes sense, hopefully this helps you, if you're first learning how to prove these kind of statements. Hopefully these videos are helping. I plan on making another one on proof by contradiction, then maybe proof by cases, then go into like proofs on particular topics like uh, divisibility, proofs with sets, uh, modular, uh, proofs using mod, that sort of thing. But if you enjoyed this video, let me know below. Comment, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. But most importantly, keep flexing those brain muscles. See y'all later.